Yeah. Good. Slap your hands. Hello. <laughs> First of all, a big thanks to Newegg who made this possible. They sent this to me to give you some sort of idea of what you're looking at with the new H150i. Corsair has been missing a 360 millimeter radiator for a good minute now from their strong arsenal of AIO coolers. And this one definitely meets the mark, especially around that $150 to $160 price point. I'll mention a few things about it and I'm gonna go ahead and apologize because I'm sure there's some of you that wanna see a lot more in depth and detail kind of looks or review of it. Let's just kind of talk about the experience I've had with it. It's far more uh, of a liquid cooler than I need for my own system right now. We plan on doing some upgrades eventually, but uh, this will serve me a lot better at that point. Not so much right now, it's just a lot of overkill. So let's take a look at it. Really the first thing I realized, hey, it's a 360 millimeter radiator and what's my problem with this? I don't have anything that can house a 360 millimeter radiator. I had the NZXT Manta here and that's not gonna happen. I have the S340 on her side at this time. Nope, that's not gonna happen either. So what do I do? Give me a kind of floating appearance. Hope you're not feeling inadequate because this case hides nothing except for the power supply. After spiraling into a black hole of self-loathing when I found out my intended configuration wouldn't work, I pondered <laughs> and discovered that I could use part of the bracket and part of the chassis itself to mount my radiator. Cool. Sure, just take my money. Why not? Go watch his review. After doing that, I ordered it, and there it is. It's arrived, the 570X. Of course, the 570X seemed fitting to put the H150i Pro in, as well as some other things to tie to link and just play around with. Also had to bust out my old Designare motherboard, because, well, an ITX motherboard in that tower will look ridiculous. Now, I wouldn't rob you guys of a quick unboxing, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. Wasn't that just lovely? Now let's bust into the H150i and take a look at it. It comes with three magnetic levitation fans by Corsair. Nothing fancy, no RGB variant of it. Kind of wish I would have seen that, but I didn't here in this package. It also comes with your mounting brackets for your 1151 sockets. And also remember, if you want Threadripper, that came with your Threadripper. You'll be able to mount that using that. It's not included here. So it uses a pretty simple standard boxing that you see with most AIOs you get, nothing super fancy. One of the problems I did have was the actual fins on the radiator itself looked a little bit dinged up. Oh yeah, don't forget this part. Uh, isn't that nice? So the radiator itself being a good 15 inches came pretty dinged up out of the box right away. Just something I had to notice. Now it's not something that anybody else is probably really going to notice once it's in there, but I didn't really expect that coming from the quality I expect from Corsair. A little bit disappointed that there were just some bends and dings into the fins. I haven't really seen that on a lot of other radiators I've gotten, so I don't know, maybe mine just did poor in quality assurance. The flexible tube fittings, these are fantastic so you can orient it the way you want in the tower. How many times have you been with uh, one of their other ones or any other one for example that doesn't have that, they're just stiff and stuck and you, you don't really have that good easy momentum of maneuvering them how you want them to be or how to appear in the tower that you want. That was a big plus for me. It's only about an inch thick and it's a really nice looking radiator with branding on both sides of it. Corsair's on one side, Corsair's on the other side and of course Corsair on the pump, they want you to know that you have a Corsair product. You connect it via USB. So this USB right here will plug into the side of the pump, the left side if you're looking at it, and then you plug the header into the bottom of the motherboard. Alternatively, you can plug one into the side and route it out the back and actually plug it into a USB type A if you have that cable available. That's not included with it, just the one that I showed you here. Once you get it plugged in, you can power it up and take a look at it in Link. Your pump will work whether you're connected to Link or not. So there's really sort of a does that matter to you type of thing. But once you have that plugged into the USB, you'll be able to open up Link and it'll be registered in Link. Where you you can rename the LED or change the LED. You can call it Bromance Colors if you want to, and you can pick the pattern you want to kind of tie it with the other lights like Lighting Node Pro or your HD fans, what have you, inside the tower. Now, 
one of the cool things about this is it says it comes with a zero RPM mode, but the thing is I couldn't get zero RPM mode to work and it could be because that that's just not fully updated and ready to be released yet. Other modes work, performance, balance. I did my test using quiet. So if you see my numbers here that I'll talk about in a moment, my tests were all done with quiet mode because I don't like loud fans, loud radiator. I don't like all that being loud. So that's how I did the testing. But again, just a little bit sad. I couldn't test the zero RPM mode. And to be honest with you, not that I'd ever really leave it at zero because I don't want my fans to ever stop. I'd like them to be going just at a lower RPM, which they sit around 700 RPMs here. It just would have been nice if I could have done that so I could have articulated it to you. Probably just an update feature that I don't have access or ability to really show you yet but I imagine it'll work and it'll work great when they update it so that it will work. At the end of the day, for the price point of about $150 to $160, I think it's a great radiator and a good fit and a good lineup for their, for their AIO arsenal where they were just missing that 360 millimeter radiator. It's beautiful and it works great, other than the small dents and dings that were on the fins themselves. So real quick, let's answer some things. I used HD 120 fans instead of the magnetic levitation fans that come with it. This is what I did all my testing with. This is how it is in my actual setup right now. Also, another question that people might be asking is, are the tubes, do they give you enough room to kind of get around the RAM? Yeah, absolutely it does. You have plenty of room there, enough so that you could probably sneak a RAM fan in there if you wanted to. Now real quick, I threw an Audio-Technica microphone in there with the gain pumped way up. You're gonna hear the six fans at their 750 RPM. Can you hear the pump? Because I absolutely couldn't. This has gotta be the quietest pump I think Corsair's ever put out. The Corsair H150i comes with three splitters for PWM fans. Three of them, obviously, because you can put three 120 millimeter fans on this radiator. So you want to be able to control them all, let's say with link, plug them all into the three headers that split off the pump right around behind the motherboard tray. You can plug those in and control them via the pump in link itself. Also, it should be noted that it's SATA powered. So if you were worried about, do you need to plug it into USB? Does it need to be plugged into something else? It's not powered that way. It is SATA powered. Plug it into SATA and power it that way because that, that's your option. I guess I should note this is what I mean by it's not an impressive processor and a little bit too much overkill probably for this processor. I'm using a 6600K, nothing super fancy, but if you can take my numbers and what I got with it and kind of apply it like, well, that sounds really good, it'll probably be notably good on your own processor. I ran Prime 95 for about an hour. At my peak temperatures, we were looking at about 53 to 54 degrees, just really trying to choke it, stress it, and torture it. However, for the most part, through most of the testing, the temperature stayed nice and frosty and about 40 to 46 degrees is where it mainly fluctuated but at its worst we got up to about 53 and I think at 1.55 degrees and that's for an hour of testing with Prime 95. Guys that's pretty much it be sure and go check the link down below go to Newegg and check it out if it's something you're interested in maybe you've been waiting for it hopefully we can see better things in the future where they put things like uh, if they're going to use the magnetic levitation fans use the RGB variant of it you're going to call it pro I would like to see something more pro oriented which of course just means prettier and better -er. and uh, that's pretty much it so if you enjoyed it like it if you didn't like it, dislike it, leave a comment if you have any questions about it. I'll see you guys in the next video. I do. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Have a great day, night, whatever it is. I'll see you in the next video.